Hello children. So once again, you all are welcome to your own channel Geography for Success. And I'm here again with a new video for you all. And uh, this video is on transport. Now, as I proceed any further, I want to remind you that share the link of this video with your friends and also do subscribe the channel. And as you subscribe the channel, also press the bell icon so that you will get the information or the notification related to any video if it is uploaded on the channel so now let's start with the topic transport first of all what is the importance of transport this is something very very important question you should know okay you all know the different means of transport we are having the land transport air transport and the waterways land uh, transport you will find the uh, especially the roadways and the trains okay these are the main uh, means of transport what is the importance of transport system in the present scenario now the transport system actually is like the arteries and veins in the human body okay these are equally important for any country again i am repeating in a human body what is the art role of arteries and veins in every part of our body arteries and veins are present and these keep the body alive okay these keep the body functioning and if you compare that with the transport system in a country you can easily relate that with the arteries and veins of a body because transport plays a very very important role in connecting one part of the country with the other it facilitates the movement of raw materials from one place to the other from the areas of uh, raw material production suppose from agricultural fields or from raw, the uh, mining areas to the industrial areas so this is how it actually helps in the development of the entire country by either uh, developing the industries or the agriculture along with that you can say it helps in the better utilization of the resources of the backward areas it actually connects the backward areas or instead of using the backward word uh, we can use the word the less developed areas okay which which need to develop then next is it aids in industrialization because just now i have mentioned that for an industry one of the basic thing what we need is raw material okay without raw material we cannot imagine of any industry to work and the raw materials are not always available at the place where the industries are established so for that purpose we need to provide the raw materials to the industries and how the raw materials will be will be carried to the industries for that purpose we need some or the other means of transport so that is one way and the other side also if you think industries are producing these are manufacturing the the raw materials into ready made goods okay now these ma uh, ready made goods or the finished products from the industries have to be taken to the markets okay or the areas where uh, these are in demand so how they will be uh, going to the market for that also we need some or the other means of transport to carry all the finished goods to the market that is only the complete industrialization now for industrialization without transport we cannot imagine any industries to develop so this is an essential part of the development of industries or overall we can say behind industrialization transport is one of the basic essential thing which we need that is one thing then when we talk about urbanization now what is urbanization expansion of the uh, the cities and the towns the expansion of cities and towns need again the transport facilities without transport facilities we cannot again imagine of the urbanization at all then next point we can add here as the importance of uh, transport that it removes the scarcity of goods 
during any of the crisis suppose anywhere we can just imagine of any area which has uh, which has actually experienced any natural disaster or it is um, um, actually experiencing some crisis right so uh, we can with the help of any transportation means we can provide immediate help to those areas right to the areas of crisis we can provide immediate help as well as to the areas of natural disasters also we uh, can evacuate the people from there right we can provide emergency services there so many such things are there which is only possible by the transport if no transport facility is there all these things will not be possible then next is it promotes the national integration in a country like india india is a vast country okay from extreme east to extreme west and from extreme north to extreme south you will find a number of different um uh, religions and uh, the uh, type of people are there right they follow different culture and traditions all these people are still in spite of all such diversity in spite of all such diversities what we have in india we are still united we always stand as one nation whenever there is any need we all are one right we all come together as one nation and transport plays a very important role in the integration okay national integration or the unity of the entire country we can even exchange our views with the other people when we move to any other area we learn about the other people of our country so in this manner we actually uh, can promote the national integration with the help of transport now when we talk about the different means of transport out of all the different means the land transport plays a major role in any um, vast country like india so in india if you see the if you try to check in our history also you will find uh, since ancient times we had several roads right since ancient times the roads were constructed on in india by various rulers and out of all those roads one a uh, very well known very popular road has been the grand trunk road and you know india had uh, several rulers you know several mughal rulers have also ruled in india and the mughal rulers were noted for building roads and during that time only you will find if you see if you try to go through the history of india you will find sher shah suri was one of the rulers in india he was a hindu ruler but yes he built the famous grand trunk road it is also in short it is called by the name gt road and what was the main purpose behind it it was to strengthen and consolidate his empire this road connected kolkata of the the, the present kolkata to peshawar so in this manner he also thought of uniting his uh, or you can say um, to consolidate his in, entire empire then he thought of the grand trunk road and it is a road which is present now also right at present we are having the grand trunk road which is connecting these two cities okay now uh, if we just talk about the roads roads and trains or the rail routes these are the two uh, means of transport over the land area right so let's talk about the roads first okay now after independence a 20 year road plan was initiated in 1961 only and at present india has a network of over 33 lakh kilometers of roads which makes it the second largest road network in the world second largest road network and this includes different types of roads we have in india it includes national highway state highway then uh, several express highways have also been introduced now then major district roads rural roads and the border road right all these are the different type of roads we can find in our country 
Now let's talk about the first one that is national highways. National highways are actually the roads which are constructed and maintained by the central government. Again I am repeating national highways are the roads which are constructed and maintained by the central government. Such roads are called national highways. Okay. The national highways span about 96,260.72 kilometers and they handle about 40% of the total road traffic in India. And uh, NHAI, okay, NHAI was constituted in 1988 and it is responsible for the development and maintenance of the national highways. Now, what is NHAI? NHAI can also be called as National Highways Authority of India. Okay, it was actually um, constituted for this purpose only to uh, develop and maintain the national highways in India. Now, the National Highways Authority of India or NHAI is also responsible for implementing other projects on national highways. Primarily road connectivity to major ports of India. Even the PWD and the BRO, that is the Border Road Organization, carry out the development and maintenance of the national highways at their own levels. Now, under various projects, what uh, we have in India, uh, one of the very important projects we need to discuss here is the Golden Quadrilateral. Golden Quadrilateral project. Now, what is it? Quadrilateral means it is joining the two, uh, sorry, the four. Quadrilateral means it is forming a quadrilateral shape, right? That means four corners are there. And yes, it is joining the four important metropolis of India. Uh, that is Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata and Chennai. All these four cities are connected by the Golden Quadrilateral. And it is the largest express highway project in India. And uh, it not only connect only these four cities, major cities of India. But yes, in between several other important cities are also lying in between these roads. So Bengaluru, Pune, Ahmedabad and Surat are also served by this network. And this is called as Golden Quadrilateral. And you know, uh, a few economic benefits are there. This project actually has been started keeping in uh, mind one important thing that it has to interconnect. It has to connect with the different cities and ports, right? So it is, it is interconnecting various important cities, right? Including several industrial cities, okay? Industrial centers, educational centers and the ports also with these four major uh, metropolitans of India. So number one benefit of it is it is interconnecting all these important centers and thus uh, it is helping in faster development of India. Next is it boosts the truck transport throughout India. Next, it enables the industrial growth of all small towns which are lying on, the, on this uh, golden quadrilateral. These small towns are in direct contact with uh, the major cities or the industrial centers. So they are also growing fast and it provides the opportunities for transport of agricultural produce also from the hinterland area to the major cities and the ports. Now what is a hinterland? Hinterland is the surrounding area which gets the benefit, right? which gets the benefit of any major city or the ports especially in context of ports this term is generally used. So even the agricultural produce also can be carried easily to the major cities or the major uh, you can say the market areas or the ports. So all these are interconnected with the help of golden quadrilateral. Now the next one more important project you should um, note down that is the north south east west corridor okay extreme north to extreme south extreme east to extreme west so these four points have been connected and this is called as north south 
and east west corridor and it consists of building 7142 kilometers 7142 kilometers of four or six lane express ways and under this you will find the north south corridor would connect Srinagar in Jammu Kashmir with Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu with a 4076 kilometers long road the same way it is connecting the the east west corridor would connect silchar okay silchar is in assam with the port town of porbandar which is there in gujarat with a, a almost a, a length of 3640 kilometers of of uh, road length so this is again very important to know about the uh, about this project which has been introduced in india right that is first one was golden quadrilateral number 2 is north south east west corridor then next is next one one term has been introduced recently in the in um, last one or two decades that is actually the express highways okay the express highways now what is actually express highway we have heard about national highway state highways and all that but what is express highway these are the highways which are generally cemented you know and these are 6 to 8 lane roads and they have controlled access over them again i am repeating these highways are cemented 6 to 8 lane controlled access road network the entrance and exit to these roads is controlled by the use of several slip roads another important thing about it is um, the expressways are designed to provide a smooth and high speed movement a smooth and high speed movement without any on road obstacles like traffic or uh, the speed breakers and all so it it provides a very uh, high speed movement over the uh, uh, the expressways now among expressways you will find several expressways uh, have been actually started in india and out of all those the most important ones are of uh, are mentioned here number 1 one of the most important ones is actually yamuna expressway this is india's second longest six lane controlled access expressway stretch okay second longest it is fast moving to minimize the travel time right it has reduced after its construction it has been found that it has reduced the travel time between delhi and agra to almost 2 hours now come to the next one next is amdavad vadodara expressway now this was actually the first expressway that was started in 2001 and it has cut the journey time again the journey time has been reduced between amdavad and vadodara to less than 1 hour and india's first four lane and dual carriageway expressway project so these are important features of amdavad vadodara expressway now next is Delhi Gurgaon Expressway it was actually opened to the public on 23rd of January 2008 and it is a part of the golden quadrilateral highway project only and it has as the other expressways it has also reduced the travel time between Gurgaon to Delhi from 60 minutes to 20 minutes so that's why it is also an important express expressway for us the next is mumbai pune expressway again just like the other expressways this has also reduced the travel time between two commercial cities mumbai and pune from 4 to 5 hours what it used to be earlier to just 2 to 3 hours okay and this is you know india's first six lane concrete high speed tolled expressway first six lane expressway then next is noida greater noida expressway it is again it is a six lane highway which connects noida and industrial suburb with greater noida another new suburb now both are there in uttar pradesh very close to delhi next is delhi noida direct flyway it is again an expressway something important about it is it is an eight lane access controlled tolled expressway which connects delhi to noida 
which is an industrial suburb then another expressway is panipat expressway this one is a 10 kilometers elevated highway at panipat in haryana it is a six lane expressway which has been built to decongest the traffic on the busy delhi amritsar route next comes the bangalore mysore infrastructure corridor it is again a four to six lane expressway and it is almost covering 111 kilometers distance in karnataka that connects bengaluru with mysore okay um after all this discussion let's talk about what are the advantages of the roadways first of all the most important thing you should know is it provides door to door service which is not provided by any of the other means of transport number 2 is that the cost the cost of construction of roadways okay the total cost which is required for it is much lower than the cost of construction of the rail tracks okay laying down of the rail tracks need a lot of uh, more expense and labor also as compared to the roadways then roadways can be much easily constructed also in the hilly areas or in the difficult terrains if you see or in the forested areas the roadways is uh, the transportation means which can easily be constructed there so as compared to the rail tracks if you if you just think of in the hilly areas we want to um, lay down the rail tracks for that purpose first of all we need to level all that area for the purpose of laying down of the rail tracks little bit uh, difference in the level will not be um, ideal for the movement of trains a lot of expense is required in that then again and it is along with expense it is quite difficult also so uh, this is another advantage of roadways as compared to the other means moreover if you uh, take the roadways these are always providing a supplement they always are the supplement for the other modes of transport what does that mean actually just think of it if we are traveling by the train right uh, from one railway station to the other railway station we are going to move now what after the railway station where to go unless we are uh, using the roadways we are not able to reach to our destination point for that we need to use the roadways moreover if you just uh, take the other example suppose the ports okay we are using any waterways and we have reached to the ports the people as well as um, the goods also suppose we have to carry the goods from one place to the other for that purpose also if we are using the trains we need to carry all that material with the help of roadways to the point of destination or to any industrial area or any such place that is one thing another example you can take suppose by the port we are coming okay we are using any port for the goods also as well as for the people from the port we are not able to reach to our again the destination unless we are using the roadways same thing uh, is there in the case of airways we cannot have the airports everywhere right so from the airport we need to reach to our destination our homes and our, our offices and all so for that purpose we need to use the roadways that is why this means uh, actually the roadways are always working as a supplement for the other modes of transport okay this is another very very important advantage of roadways now after this let's talk about the uh, disadvantages of roadways now what are the most important disadvantages first of all if you compare uh, the total road network of our country with the total uh, population we are having a large population in our country so as we compare that with the total population of it the road network is still inadequate okay what it should be it's not present at this moment now second point is that large part of the roads are you know still unmetalled that means um, in several areas you will find these are unmetalled that means these cannot be used during the rainy season so that is again an uh, disadvantage for the roads because these are only restricted 
um, um, till the dry period they can be used during rainy season they cannot be used at all then uh, in several cities most of the cities most of the urban areas you will find the roads are highly congested and uh, the basically uh, the main problems are with the passing of heavy loaded trucks which generally carry the load which is uh, the always more than or above the prescribed limits what it what they should carry so whenever this happens it always damages the roads in the long run okay so that is again one disadvantage of the roads another thing is that uh, you all must have noticed also whenever we uh, move on the roads we find that all the different type of vehicles are moving at the same time right on the same road different type of vehicles move which um, actually it results in the congestion and the slow movement of the vehicles now come to the next uh, a lot of encroachment roads so you will find at several places and uh, which causes again a big problem for the proper movement of the uh, vehicles and that is one of the reason for the traffic congestion in most of the uh, settlement areas so these are basically the most important disadvantages regarding the roadways this is all with this video children and uh, as i leave i want to remind you once again share the link of this video with your friends and uh, do subscribe the channel so see you soon in the next video of transport till then bye